milkweed and set up. Mana caterpillars only eat milkweed. Milkweed is poisonous to all animals except monarchs. The poison in the milkweed is still in the monarchs when it is a butterfly. Predators that eat monarchs will not eat any more of them. We use flow tubes to keep the milkweed fresh. We stuck the tubes in styrofoam to keep them standing straight up. Our teacher found and cut the milkweed. Then she washed it in bleach water. Next, she washed it in soapy water. After that, she refrigerated it. Finally, she gave it to the caterpillars. A monarch butterfly egg is the size of a pinhead. The monarch butterfly lays her egg on the bottom side of a milkweed leaf. She only lays eggs on milkweed. She lays up to 100 eggs. The butterfly does not return to see if it's all right. Our little caterpillars were less than an inch long. They did not have bright colors. They also did not move a lot. They were just starting to eat little holes in the leaves. Malting. The caterpillar skin, at first, is mostly black with a little yellow. The face mask is black with two white dots on either side. The caterpillar sheds its skin five times. Our caterpillars ate their skin. They left the face masks. A first in star is a caterpillar that just hatched out of the egg. A second in star is when it is about one fourth of an inch long. A third in star is when the colors get a lot brighter. At fourth in star you could see the white spots on the pearl legs. A fifth in star is when it is about two inches long and starts looking for a spot to pupate. Large caterpillars. Once the caterpillars got bigger, they were eating about a whole milkweed leaf each day. The caterpillars were also moving a lot. They were also really fast. They were so good at climbing, they looked like they could do an agility course. Their poop increased in size as they ate more. When we would go up to look at them, you could hear them munching, just as you would hear yourself eating with your mouth open. When large caterpillars get bigger, their pearl legs get white spots. The caterpillars get brighter in color. In the wild, animals can tell what they are. When predators learn they taste bad, they will not eat another one. The caterpillars' antennas also get longer. They need their antennas so they can smell things like what they need to eat. Getting ready. When a caterpillar was ready to find a spot to pupate, it would try to get to the top of the tent as high up as possible. It picked a spot that was perfect. Okay. Then it spun a button or silken thread. It became very crowded up there. It was very cool to see that. When a caterpillar made a J shape, it was hanging upside down. It was in that position for about a day. Then it would pupate. Pupa. When a caterpillar turns into a pupa, first the skin splits open at the back of its neck. The pupa skin is green underneath. It starts wriggling and wriggling until its skin comes off. The outer skin of the pupa hardens into the chrysalis. We saw the tiny skin on the floor of the tent. It looked like a dead fly. Chrysalis. After the caterpillar has shed his slash her skin for the last time, it will turn into a pupa. The chrysalis changes colors through this stage. It will first be a brighter green with yellow marks. Then the chrysalis will harden and you will be able to see some gold dots in a little circle around it. In about nine days, it will turn black and that means the butterfly will come out soon. Next, it will turn clear and you will be able to see the wings of the butterfly. It will come out very soon. The emergence. The emergence happens very quickly. At first, the butterfly is very fat and its wings are folded. It needs to pump fluid into its wings. The body becomes thinner and the wings expand. Eventually, it becomes a beautiful butterfly. Monarch butterflies' colors are black, orange, and black trim with white dots. Their patterns are black veins with an orange oval in the middle. They have taste organs on their feet, so when they land on a flower, they can taste it. Their proboscis is long and black, and it helps them sip, sip nectar. They have antennae to help them smell. 
You can tell the difference between a boy and girl monarch because the boy has a dot on each of its hind wings that the girl doesn't have. The monarch butterfly has little things like toes to help them climb up the tent. We fed them we fed the butterflies fresh fruit like watermelon and oranges. Another thing that they like to eat is flowers, but a butterfly only drink, drinks the nectar. It is very cool to watch when a monarch drinks the juices from the watermelon. Its proboscis is curled up, but when it drinks, the proboscis unfolds and becomes straight. Then it drinks the juices. Our butterflies would cling in rows to the sides of the tent and sleep. They would do this every day in the late afternoon. They would begin to move around again when our teacher came into the classroom and turned on the lights. We worked at the partner. One of us held the butterfly by the top edge of its forewings. One of us stuck the tag on a discal cell of one of its hind wings. We tagged each of our monarch butterflies. The tag shows information like the email and the phone number for reporting. Our teacher recorded all the information needed for each butterfly. The tag number, release date, and place, and if it was a boy or a girl. It is important and fun to tag them. If you find a tagged butterfly, please report it. The butterflies were released into the wild. And when we released them, everyone was cheering. All the butterflies were free. One wouldn't get out, but my teacher took it out of the tent. For them to fly, the temperature must be at least 60 degrees. When our class got our caterpillars, we were really excited. We did some research on a website called Journey North. We read articles on what a monarch does. It said, you know if it's going to make a pupil because the stripes are brighter and white spots are on their legs. When it was in the chrysalis, we researched how long it would be inside. When they turned into butterflies, we released them. Then we researched how far they fly and how long they migrate. We looked on Journey North and they said they found monarchs in Mexico. We made life cycle books telling about and illustrating what we learned. When we had our caterpillars, we observed and measured them each day. We had a journal where we wrote down what we saw. We also drew a picture. When we measured them, we had to take a roller and hold it up to the caterpillar and measure in centimeters. We graphed their growth. We also observed, wrote about, and drew pictures of the other stages. Looking at skins. We looked at the skins after the caterpillars shed them and became pupas. They looked like a very big fly that is fuzzy and very old. They were black and all scrunched up. I wanted to touch them, but I didn't want to touch them. Migration. They think the monarchs might know where to go by their antennae. They think they might gain weight instead of lose weight because they might glide and save energy instead of flying all the time. Only the monarchs that are born in fall migrate. Most migrations of monarchs are one of two paths. One is east of the Rockies, one is west. They can only travel when the sun shines. Monarchs often travel in thousands and ten thousands. Many of the monarchs that travel south do not survive. Conservation. In California, they are clearing roosting trees for the monarch butterflies so people can live on the coast. In Mexico, they are cutting down roosting trees for the monarch butterflies because they want lumber. When people cut down trees it opens a hole in the canopy and it lets in rain and snow. When rain and snow comes in it kills the butterflies inside. Olmo trees are the main roosting trees for the monarch butterflies that migrate there. Loss of milkweed. It is a problem that people are cutting down milkweed to clear land for people to use for homes, crops, and other needs. Milkweed is important because it is the only thing the monarch caterpillar will eat. 
If there is no milkweed, the monarch butterfly would become extinct. One of the biggest reasons the milkweed is dying is people are spraying insecticide on their crops. People need to stop spraying and cutting down milkweed. The value of monarch butterflies. The monarch butterflies pollinate. This makes them a very important part of our food chain. Without animals that pollinate, there would be no plants. Monarchs are also beautiful, so keep them alive. Monarchs are a huge part of our lives.